Hi everyone, Quiveen here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. Tonight we are going to be taking a look into the northern sky to take a look at a couple of deep sky objects that we can see around the constellations that we mentioned earlier this week in our shorter Twitter videos and we'll also be introducing at least one other constellation. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to stay up to date on the next ones that we're posting, make sure you hit the little red subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to be kept up to date with every releasing, including the live streams that we're now putting out, make sure to click that little bell icon and keep up to date with all of our notifications. So tonight we're taking a look into the northern sky at just about 10 o'clock. If you've been keeping up with our videos, then I'm sure you're already very familiar with how to find North. And if you were watching our videos earlier this week on Twitter, you might already know how to find the bright star Arcturus. Arcturus is over in the east tonight. So if you can find that shape of the plow or the Big Dipper, the handle of the plow makes an arc and you follow that arc to Arcturus. Now, Arcturus is one of the brighter stars in the sky. It's the brightest star in the constellation of Buetes. And Buetes is one of the northern constellations. It's in the direction where we see the edge of the Milky Way. But there are a couple of clusters of stars around Buetes. Let's take a closer look at one of them here. So just there, in the Stellarium, that little circle with a cross through it is your sign for a globular cluster, a dense cluster of stars. You can see there are a couple of them around. We're going to first look at M3 here. M3 is a nice cluster because it has some clear bright stars, but behind them it has this very fuzzy center where everything blends together. Now, generally, we see more globular clusters towards the center of our galaxy and fewer out towards the edge. Edge, but we do still see a couple out towards the edge of our galaxy, just not as many. Buetes isn't one of the most famous characters in history or mythology. Buetes was a shepherd and even though he was a very important character to the ancient Greeks, he hasn't gotten as famous in the modern day as this guy trying to chop the head off a multi-headed serpent. This is Hercules and he's depicted in the sky wrestling the Hydra. Unfortunately, at this time of the year, he is upside down. But inside Hercules is the great star cluster and the great star cluster in Hercules it's circumpolar, which means it stays in our sky all night long, every night of the year. The great star cluster is always there. So if you're looking for Hercules, you can start by finding Buetes. Hercules is just next to Buetes in the sky. If you're looking at Buetes a little bit to the left, you should find Hercules. We've also got the bright star Vega very close to Hercules, and we've also shown how you can find Vega in some of our shorter Twitter videos. So we're going to take a look at this great star cluster in Hercules, and it really is deserving of its name. There we have a very dense ball of stars with a few extra bright stars closer to us. We can see that they're really blending together in the center and you've got that slow fade out towards the outside, this sort of rough, almost a little ragged looking around the edges, this ball of stars. So the great star cluster in Hercules, it is pretty great. It's definitely deserving of its name. It's a very bright, very clear star cluster. And that's something you will need a telescope to see. But if you've got a medium large telescope, it is visible even in the city. And we've got another star cluster just over there. Now, Hercules is one of the more famous characters from Greek mythology. So he is a nice one to find in the sky. But another famous character from Greek mythology is Andromeda. We've pointed out in previous videos how you can find Andromeda by finding the constellation of Cassiopeia just up here and then going through down towards the horizon. So here's the Andromeda galaxy and we call the Andromeda galaxy Andromeda after the constellation of Andromeda. So there's Andromeda there. Andromeda was meant to be a princess in Greek mythology. And just above Andromeda is Perseus. So Perseus, like Hercules, was a hero in ancient Greece. And you can see we've got some nice clusters in there. But these clusters are different. You can see that these clusters are marked instead with a dotted circle. These are not globular clusters, but open clusters and if we take a closer look at one of them here you'll see it's definitely a group of stars 
But they're not quite a ball or a globule, they are just a collection of stars. And these clusters often form when young stars are after emerging from a cloud of gas. So you might already be familiar with at least two clusters that we've mentioned before in previous videos. So just here we have the Pleiades. If I get rid of the label, you should see that little shape of the seven sisters or the Pleiades. If we take a closer look, you can see there's a lot more than seven stars. So they are a cluster. They're all nice and close together. You can refer back to some of our older videos if you'd like to learn more about the Pleiades. They're quite young and still very close together. Whereas just over here, we have the Hyades, which are another open cluster of stars that are after spreading a little bit further apart. And they're just the front of the constellation of Taurus. So we have different forms of clusters of stars when we look into the sky. And these open clusters, they're inside our galaxy. They're areas of our galaxy where new stars have formed and form these little groups. Whereas globular clusters, well, we now know there's a globular cluster over there in the constellation of Hercules, but we can't actually see it, not with our eyes. You really need a telescope for those globular clusters in the sky. You can see, even taking a slightly closer look, we can see there's a little fuzzy area there, and that's the globular cluster. It's just around the outside of our galaxy, which is why we need a telescope to see those, whereas the open clusters can often be seen just with your eyes. So whether you're using your eyes or you're using a telescope, I hope that you get a chance to take a closer look at those objects later on this evening. In our next video, we're going to be taking a closer look at Vega, Deneb, and their partner star, Altair. If we let Altair come up, there's Altair, Vega and Deneb. They make a nice triangle in the sky that we call the Summer Triangle. Why do we call it the Summer Triangle? Well, for the answer to that question, you'll have to join us in our next video. And I hope you do get a chance to see some open clusters, if not some globular clusters in the sky over the next couple of evenings.